All right. By the way, I would encourage you, I'd encourage you to do this. Take your Bibles and turn to Colossians chapter 3 again. I'd take, I would encourage you to go on, uh, on the internet and look up Caleb Garraway and see some of the things that he has done. He has put together, they, they have a real patriotic theme, but then also revival, etc. And uh, he has put together several videos that I mean they are they are professional. They are really good. You will be impressed. And he's coming here. We have been trying to work this out, and I praise God that we have finally gotten it uh, gotten it together. So I am I'm encouraged by it. Uh, when the service is done tonight after we say amen, we're going to spend just a little time in prayer. Uh, so please just stick around, stick around for that. I want to see the Lord work. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it after we have finished the, uh, the broadcast. But, uh, meanwhile, we're in Colossians chapter eight. I told you, uh, last week that you know, I couldn't wait to get to Colossians chapter 3. I love the book of Colossians and the practical side of, of the book as it starts in Colossians 3.1. And now as it continues into chapter 4, I hope and pray you'll see what I mean. We got to verse 17. If we could just start, the message is not going to be long tonight. Uh, but if we could start in, cha- in verse 18 of Colossians 3, and we will go to Colossians 4, verse 1. So Colossians 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you would guide in this time. Lord, speak to us, speak to all that will hear this message. This is a time when we need to read and heed. This will not come again. We are in the situation we are because we have not taken things as we will read tonight and taken them seriously. Help us to do it now, I pray. In Christ's name, amen. Decades ago, uh, I was told that there's times I get a little too uh, transparent. All right. Guilty is charged. But honestly, there are times I, I read and, and, and I'm just, I, I'm a people person. And I'm telling you folks, you can't read the word of God and not understand the importance of the people that you walk with and you are part of. When it comes to reading, like I said, reading and heeding, that's not just a simple act of little poetry in English. It really is needful. 
I, 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 in, in my thoughts that I was thinking about this, I just, I jotted a few things down before we're going to get into this. And so I just want to, I just want to bear my heart and just put it out there. By design of the wicked one and a wicked world, the institutions God created are under grievous attack. You know, have you ever, have you ever tried to fight somebody? You're holding onto a door and you can feel the pressure of them trying to push it in. And you just, you know, you're, you're there and, you know, for whatever reason, I mean, it, it's probably, you know, you're messing with somebody or whatever, but you're leaning on the door and they're leaning on the other side and you're not going to allow them in and they want in. Look, there are times that I fight tears because the wicked one wants to get in. And as the pastor, as a Christian, as a dad, as a papa, as a husband, the whole bit, I don't want that guy in. And, and I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're up again it and, and it's like, you know, Lord, Please help. You know why? Because God so loved the world. What did he love? He loved souls. He loved people. And people are for eternity. It got very precious in the book of Genesis when the, 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 the Trinity said, you know what? Let's, let us make man in our image. I was giving the gospel to uh, this young man yesterday and tried to get him to understand, you know, here we are. This is, we are not, you know, I, got, I, I go back to that poem I learned a long time ago, you know, at Faith Baptist. First I was an amoeba, I beginning to begin. Then I was a tadpole with my tail tucked in. Then I was a monkey in a banana tree. But look at me now, I'm a PhD. I know it wasn't worth repeating. But the point is this. We, as God's people, see the preciousness of life. Satan is doing everything he can to cheapen it. That, my friend, is hellish. It is no exaggeration, and I'm telling you, all you need to do is go to the legislative slate for the state of California and see what I'm talking about. It is no exaggeration to say the California capital has turned into a sewer. I mean a sewer with laws and regulations that absolutely spew immoral and godless corruption. I am stunned by the laws that they are working on right now. Um, maybe this message is going to go a little bit further, a little bit longer. It was, it was uh, 1981 or something like that. The fairness doctrine was still, was still going. Bernie and I just got married in 1980. I'm out driving, I'm, 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 I'm pulling my tractor to a couple of jobs. Every time I got into my F-750 Bobtail dump truck, I had the radio on and there was a radio station out of San Francisco, all news station I'd listen to while I was out. And twice, twice there was an editorial that they put on, um, about this this public school library that was receiving pushback when it came to certain books that it was, that was being allowed in the book. It was because of language now. But I heard that. Mama, I heard that twice. And I mean, something inside of me, I thought, this is pathetic. Now, I'm just, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a backhoe operator. I'm a tra- you know, I'm a laborer. I, I do concrete. 
But I went home that night and I wrote a reply. The next day, I called KCBS from the job site and said, I, uh, I'd like to do a reply to your editorial. Okay, well, write it and let us know. I said, I wrote it. Oh, okay, when you have it, you know, go ahead and, and, and give it to us or, send, or, or, you know, call us and read it. I said, I've got it. I read it to them. Editorial replies were supposed to only be 90 seconds long. It was 93 seconds. I talked faster. I went down. I left that next Tuesday. I, I, I left the job site, got on BART, and went to downtown San Francisco. Concrete dust and all. And, and I, you know, and I went up there and I made this reply. Well, in doing the reply, the manager of the radio station, she and I got to talking, and I mean, we got to going back and forth. And it got interesting, but yet it was, it was cordial. It was good. It was all right. But then KCBS pulled something else about, you know, the public school and children and how the public school has this hand on them. And I thought, this is pathetic. This ain't good. So I called Pastor Dave Ennis and said, listen, this is what's going on. Um, could you help? Because they actually called me and said, would you like to come onto the program? I said, are you kidding me? I said, I don't do this kind of thing. But Pastor Dave Ennis got on the radio station. I thought, praise God, I've got a relationship here. I'm going to use it. So we lined up. I mean, I say we lined up. We let preachers know what was going to be going on. And the independent Baptist pastors lined up on the, tel on the, on the telephone. It was great. Uh, Brad, your old preacher, Ron Allen, got on there. The guy was the head honcho of the of public education in the state of California. And Pastor Allen asked the guy point blank, I'll never forget it, who do the children belong to in the state of California? The guy couldn't answer. That's wicked. And it's gotten ten times worse. Government, the local church, and especially the family are all suffering from the lies and distortions, distortions hell spews the wicked reiterate. We can see that in cable news, much less, you know, everything else. Broken homes, suicides, drug and alcohol abuse, absent fathers, and the worst kind of immorality are the result of the crumbling of God's plan. I just, I see it. You see it. Again, go, go to the legislative, legislative slate. You can find it, no problem. The, uh, go to California Family Council, and they will show you. And I'm telling you, as a papa, I praise God my grandkids aren't in government schools, but they want to shut down charter schools, Christian schools, etc. Then it's what it's happened with people. I, I told you before, I've got a friend from years ago who has tried to justify his sinful life by telling me God is really interested in relationships. No, God is interested in holiness. The attack is not just in the media, entertainment. By the way, I'm, I'm saying all this for a reason. The attack is not just in the media, entertainment, politics, or the courts. It festers in the hearts of minds, of humanity, and feeds on ignorance of God's word. It feeds on it. We've got an area church right now. I'm not going to tell you who. Maybe down the road, I'll be informing you a little bit more. But there is 
there's an area church in here in Sacramento that is in trouble because somebody, instead of going by the book, went by emotion, and now the church is being sued in a situation. It's not good, folks. It's, it's not good. And th- look, we all need to encourage each other. Hey, hey, let, let's, let's do it right. We don't always get it right. The pastor doesn't always get it right. And when he doesn't, I praise God for people that will tell me, hey, have you thought this through? You know, I praise God for people like Roger and Brad and Ted and so many others. This is good. This is good. God's people need to make plain and give practice to the truth found in the Bible. Number one, learn the realities of God's institutions from his word, not sinful man's and reasonings and assumptions. Two, true obedience to the Lord does not diminish a person's dignity or worth. It elevates it. Three, in a fallen culture, the preciousness of God's creation will never be understood or embraced. The world, so many in the world, just don't think that much about an unborn child now. I just heard about a, about a hospital that shut down their their um, birthing area, their birthing center, because of abortion. There's been so many, it just, they're, they're, they're not getting the business. That's disgusting. But meanwhile, meanwhile, the, the family has crumbled because of legislation and a drifting from biblical truth. Three fourths of children in the black community are born without a father in the family, in the home. Over a third of Caucasian children, same thing. What's the point? We got a problem. Because he created them male and female. Sorry, MSNBC. He he made them male and female, and he made them husband and wife. Number four, living by the book is always wise. The Bible still has the answers. With all that in mind, with all that in mind, Without apology, we look at God's creation, not just in the procreation of here is another individual, but we look at the creation of the family, of government, of individual responsibility, and the creation of the new creature in Christ and how he or she is to live in a fallen world. This kind of thinking, what we're going to be looking at right here, is not popular. In fact, it flies in the face of what modern culture would live on. And yet, I'm here to tell you that living by the book beats living by the culture any day. Because if you do it God's way, you have God's protection, God's promise, God's blessing. So with that in mind, we have already seen in Colossians 3, verse 1, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, and we've already been through this, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So that deals with the putting off and the putting on that we saw in those chapters. Now we're into relationships and we deal with the same thing. I want you to remember this, though, as we read this, and we'll see this a little bit. Please understand, 
The Bible interprets itself. The Bible interprets itself. You're going to find scripture that will help you deal with another scripture and help you understand. Secondly, remember, the God of the book is there to help you with the book. The promises of the book, the procedures of the book, all of that. For instance, look at verse 18 where we start. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Now, anybody here, especially who has been in the military, understands the word submit. It has to do in the Greek with the idea of rank. When I went into the Air Force, I was Airman Airman Basic. Then I became Airman First Class. Then I was Sergeant. And then I was a Staff Sergeant. And then I got my freedom. But the point is this. You start going up in rank. Somebody has to be the head of the household. Somebody has to take the lead. You go, well, yeah, but what about the whole situation we've got here? Listen, the God of the book is here to help us with the procedures of the book. Notice the illustration that Paul uses when it comes to his, his letter to the church at Ephesus, Ephesians 5, verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. Now listen to this even as Christ is the head of the church, and and he is the savior of the body. Now, I will stop right now and say this. There are some ladies that wind up in a situation where they have somebody who doesn't recognize the authority of the word of God. That is another message, but suffice it to say that, again, God understands, God knows, and God is able to give grace and mercy. The point is this. We are, we are dealing with a passage where everybody is to be listening. And we read this. Therefore, verse 24 in Ephesians 5, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in every thing. Again, going back to verse 18. So the ladies are told, the wives are told, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, not somebody else, your own husbands. The the emphasis here is on loyalty. I tell you what, I praise God for the backing that this lady gives me. We can get in the car on Saturday night, and I want to just go all the way to Interstate 80, get on it, heading east, and follow my headlights till I hit the east coast. You know, there's just times it's like, boy, I'm telling you, did I lay the proverbial egg tonight? She's right there. If I'm silent, she's silent. She knows that I, I, I'm i so lost in my thoughts. I praise God for how she supports me. Ladies, you don't realize how much power you have over your husband. You just don't. It's been great to watch Mama Green with Papa Green. I love that man. You have, and it's not been easy. It's not been easy. I praise God for what you have done. Other people have difficulty. You know, there's, there are situations that are tough and sometimes the husband is gone and we've got two examples of that here. That's hard. By the way, that's when the church steps in because we have specific instruction there. But then there's also, you know, we pray for certain people. You know, we, we, I I don't want to get a a fight going in here right now, but I could, I could tease a couple of people, but we're, we're not going to do that. As it is fit in the Lord, that means that it's fitting that a Christian wife should exhibit her submission Why? Because she is a Christian. Listen, the most important thing about us in this life, as we prepare to step into the next one, is not what political party we're in. In fact, it's not what our culture says or what country we're part of. It is, are we living according to the book that our God has given us? Are we being a Christian? 
That's the thing that is important. Like Paul said, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body, that's how the husband is to act. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own husbands. Look at verse 19. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Again, going back to Ephesians 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. I've used this illustration before. I can't remember how long ago I did, and I can't use names. I can't bring in, you know, a whole lot of detail in it. Uh, but there was a situation that our church was involved in years ago. There was, um, there was a lady that came from back east. She had several children. She came, she actually, she, she fled her husband. And she came with five kids. They were living in a trailer, small trailer in the south. And she fled. But she wanted to be in an independent Baptist church because that's where she came from. So myself and others, a couple of us, you know, we, we, we talked with her. And this is what it came down to be. Her husband would beat her. He was cruel to her. Basically, he was an idiot. She went to the pastor's wife. The pastor's wife's response was this. Well, honey, that's just our lot in life. That, A, is foolish. B, is as unbiblical as you can get. She wanted, she, she wasn't around here very, very long. She had a relative that lived somewhere else in California and she wound up going there. But, and I know, you know, you, you men would be thinking this with me. That's when you want to have <laughs> a church meeting with just the men. Yeah, seriously. Uh, but that, you know, I, I mean, it's like, you have, you, you have got to be kidding me. See, again, this is why by the book is so important. Brad, you could be reminding the guy as they put the handcuffs on him, uh, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Now, let me say this again. I know this. Everything that we're looking at in God's word, everything that I'm saying, it flies in the face of the modern culture. You know this. You, We hear this in the Bible but my soul, you go home and through the week or with relatives or with friends and you're going against it. Why? Because it's not the way that the nation is going. It's not the culture today. We need to refuse and refute the culture. The culture needs to be Christ. That's what he brings out in the beginning of Colossians 3. When Christ, who is our life, therefore, hey, listen, husbands, love your wives. That's what we are commanded for. By the way, the word love here is not the Greek word phileo. The world had that down, the fondness and all that. You have the fondness, you know, when you get married and hopefully... You know, you keep that, but here's the point. The Greek word here is agapeo. It's the love that God has. It's the love that is given, not for what the loved object can do for you, but the fact that the, 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 the person giving the love is giving it no matter what the object is or has done, while we were yet sinners, the Bible told us, tells us, Christ died for us. That is God's love. And he says this, love your wives. Agape, love your wives. That's the love from 
Calvary. And he says then, okay, that's how you do it. And therefore, because of that, and be not bitter against them. The word bitter there means to exasperate, to irritate. Honey, have I ever uh, exasperated you? <laughs> I love you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. See, she just covered. But you know, really, hey, you know, dwell with them according to knowledge. We, you know, we teach, you know, this is how many words a man will use during the day. <laughs> I, I love that. Maybe, maybe some of you have heard that thing where on, it, it, you talk about funnier than a rubber crutch. Man, I'm telling you, where Jeff Foxworthy does this thing. Where, where he says, you know, I got a text. What was it? Tom, he, he was, in, pray for Tom. He was in a, he was in a wreck. And he tells his wife that. He said, were, were the kids with him? No, it just says, pray for Tom. He was in a wreck. Well, were they wearing their seatbelts? No, it just says, pray for Tom. He was in a wreck. Well, which hospital did they go to? I don't know. It just says, pray for Tom. Well, you don't know anything, do you? What do you know? I just say, I, it just says, pray for Tom. He was in a wreck. <laughs> and you're laughing because you know it's true. You know, when it comes to the culture, we have to think about this. You know, binding contracts have gotten cheaper. People will buy a house they know they can't buy. They can't, they can't afford. People will do the same thing with cars. I know I've done that before. Oh, that's a long time ago. But when it comes to marriage, you know, we saw in Hollywood how they've cheapened this. You know, uh, instead of death to us part, uh, it's until further notice. No, no. We are to come and we are to love as Christ loved us. And I praise God for how much he loves us and the fact that it will never, never end. Look at verse 20. Children, obey your parents. In all things, for this is well-pleasing. That means, you know, commendable. This is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Parents are to rule the children. Society wants it the other way around. I am amazed how government now is trying to rip the authority from the parents of the children down to the as low as 12 years of age. If that child says, I'm not a boy, I'm a girl. And the parents go, no, no, wait a minute. No, honey, you're confused. You've been, you've been influenced. The, the state can step in. This is what they want and take the child from the parents. In a land where you used to have to have a signature of a parent just to give the child an aspirin in school or to get the ears pierced, now you can take the surgeon's knife and butcher that body incredibly and the state and the culture thinks it's commendable. In fact, it's just downright wonderful. Folks, I don't need to tell you. You know this. Our world has gone mad. But that's what happens when you start living Romans chapter 1. You're given over to a reprobate mind. Aren't you so glad this world is not our home? But there's a point, there, there's, there's a reason why I'm emphasizing this, and we're going to get to hit this in just, in just a bit. So children, obey your parents. Look at verse 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. The word provoke means to irritate. This man by the name of Lightfoot, and I quote him several times in this, in, um, in this message. Lightfoot says, irritation is the first consequence of being too exacting with children and irrational. Ir irritation, excuse me, leads to a, a, a morosis, so, you know, where somebody just loses heart. Um, had a, uh, a young man that was in a youth group I was working with. And uh, a lady that I know in the church 
she was she was just beside herself. She couldn't she couldn't believe it. It's actually it wasn't a father; it was a mother that was doing this. But this gal, she was on the phone with the mother of this teenager, and she was just belittling him and speaking horrible. You know, just how he's useless and this and that. And then she finds out that the young man is standing right there in the kitchen. He's right there in the kitchen listening to her say all this. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. You talk about discouragement. This is why we need encouragement, and encouragement starts in the home. It also needs to be here in the local church. Look, all of you who are perfect in practice, please stand up. (laughs) We're here to encourage each other. The Apostle Paul makes that plain. Look at verse 22. Now, this gets interesting. This gets interesting. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Now, I want to tell you something. What we have read so far, what what Paul has instructed the people, the, the God's people in Colossae to do, Number one, flies in the face of uh, the culture. Again, they're in Colossae. The culture of Rome, it flies in the face of it. But now he's starting to use some interesting language. And it all goes back to an individual that he writes of to somebody else. And you'll see what I mean. But we need to build the case first. But this is how... The church, in its in its growth, began to ever so subtly and yet so purposely take apart a godless culture. Okay, expositors, they made this statement about this. They made this observation. The case of slaves is treated at greater length than that of the other family relations probably on account of this man, Onesimus. But Paul was much possessed with the need for keeping Christianity free from the suspicion it naturally created of undermining the constitution of society. See, there are people that looked in the Bible and said, why didn't Paul just come right out and say, do away with slavery, you know, Revolt and all, all this. No, no. That if that had happened, immediately there is war, and Christianity is put to death. Instead, let's continue. So, while a slave and a free man is a distinction which has vanished for Christianity, we don't really deal with that. Although there's still there is, but we'll we can talk about that later. And the interest of Christianity. As a spiritual power, social freedom had to be cheerfully foregone foregone, till the new religion was able to assert its principle with success. An instructive parallel is the exhortation to submission to constituted authority in Romans 13. Obey those that have the rule over you. That Roman society was worthless when it came to godliness. But he said, you know, go, and again, at another time. In Paul's time, slaves probably made up the larger part of the population of the empire, and that was true. There were more slaves in the Roman Empire than there were free men. But there is something going on here. Watch this. According to the flesh, he uses that phrase, to distinguish, when it comes to masters, to distinguish those that are in the flesh. Humans, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, 
not with eye service as men pleaser. See, in other words, he says, he says, listen, obey them, but not just when they can see you. You know, you're going to do it because there they are. You know, there are even God's people. They'll, they'll, they'll tighten up their activity, you know, when other people are seeing them. But he says this, no, do this, but in singleness of heart. In other words, don't have a dual heart. I, 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 I live this way when people can see me, but when they can't see me, I live this way. Now, I'm not, to, I'm not talking about relaxing or something like that. I, I, I'm, or, or, you know, you know, going on vacation. I'm talking about obedience. You know, if it's right to live this way when other people are watching, then you live this way. You, you live submitted to God when nobody's watching. So he says, hey, listen. He says, you, that you're Christians, but your master is not. You live the same way. You obey whether or not they can see you or if they can't see you. Because you're supposed to live in singleness of heart, fearing God. Watch this. Look at verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. There's two different Greek words that translate do. The first word there just refers to be doing something, but the second word, do it heartily as to the Lord, that has to mean to, to labor, to be diligent, do it diligently as to the Lord, whatever it might be. Heartily literally means out from the soul. Why? Look at verse 24. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. It doesn't matter if you're digging a ditch or you know you're you're doing you're teaching, you're 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 a CPA, it, it, it doesn't matter. God's people. God's people need to keep in mind, I, I'm not doing this because I'm working for him or her. I'm working for him. I'm doing it as to the Lord, not unto men. See, that's the key. Now, here's what we need to keep in mind. He has been dealing with servants, slaves, that have trusted Christ, and they have masters. But now his language is going to slightly alter. Look at verse 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. You know what that means? Paul is starting to shed light to the slave that the God that you truly serve is watching. And it doesn't matter who does the wrong, servant or the master. I was talking to a Christian brother just, just this last week. He and he's and he's not here. He's out of state now. He used to be here. He was really working hard. He he wanted to do his best on this job. And the company put him with someone that was just they were not kind, they were cruel with their tongue, with their actions, with their language and literally was beating him down with his words. You ever worked with somebody like that? That's not easy. That's not fun. It got to the point where it drained him 
of even working for that company, and he walked away from it. He really wanted to work. He wanted to be there, but this person put him down. The guy was on his phone talking to his wife in, in earshot of him, said a couple of things about him. He just, uh, again, he, was re- he honestly was trying to do his best, but this person is being wicked. The Lord would say, he's going to get his comeuppance. His sin will find him out. His sin will absolutely find him out. Look at verse chapter one, chapter four, verse one. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. So, you see, we have a situation where there are men, women, that are masters that have become Christian. And now, within the earshot of the slave, Paul is telling them, you need to treat them like God would have you treat. I mean, th- this, this is important. Knowing that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. And this is classic because it goes back to a one chapter letter the apostle Paul wrote. And I'm thinking, you know, along with a few other verses, This book right here, this letter, settles the whole thing when it comes to race relations in America. Turn to the book of Philemon. Here was a man. Here was a man that was a Christian. A friend of Paul's. He had a slave by the name of Onesimus. And that slave ran away. If you had a slave and that slave ran away, you don't treat them well. They're probably dead if they're caught. But instead, miraculously... (laughs) Onesimus came into contact with Paul while he was a prisoner in Rome. Paul led him to Christ. A letter was written by Paul, sent back to Philemon by the hand of Tychicus, I believe was involved in it, and Onesimus. We're not going to read the whole thing. I just want to read a few verses. But look what he says. Look at verse 10. I beseech thee for my son, uh, Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds, which in time past was to thee unprofitable. Yeah, he ran away. But now profitable to thee and to me. Thus saith Paul. He goes on. He goes on. Whom I have sent again, that thou therefore receive him, that is, mine own bowels, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. But without thy mind would I do nothing that thy benefit should not be, as it were, of necessity, but willingly. In other words, okay, I've got to leave him with Paul. No, no, I'm sending him back to you. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever. Not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, Especially to me, but how much more unto thee, 
both in the flesh and in the Lord. If thou count me therefore as a, 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 a partner, receive him, look at those next two words, as myself. You know, what Paul was doing was this. He's saying, listen, we need to heed the gospel. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And when they embrace the gospel, their stance in your life changes. So here's a culture. It needs help with the wives, with the husbands, with the children, and now with the business world, if you can put it like that, but actually sweeping across the whole culture. Now, the ground at the cross is level. It isn't like that. According to church history, Philemon did just that. He embraced him. He accepted him as a brother in Christ, forever changed. That is what happens when society lives by the book. It changes the culture. They're not a Christian. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. They're a Christian. Love one another as I have loved you. And it's so sad that we have gotten to this, and I'm almost done. It's so sad that we've gotten to this, that what we now have is all the noise coming over the media, over the internet, all of this. They're screaming the sins of society, but they're strong-arming and pushing away the answer to the sin. He's the one that makes it work. Tell you what, aren't you glad you have Christ? He doeth all things well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that we would recognize the preciousness, the value of what we have in Christ, the change that comes with the gospel. Lord, I pray that you would help us in this time to recognize, yes, the resistance to it, but the fact that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Lord, may we not be weary in well-doing. So thankful for the promise that as thy days, so shall thy strength be. Lord, we need your strength. In the days ahead, as we encourage people to come and hear the gospel when Brother Garraway is here, but then also as we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, Lord, we're going to be looking for you to do your work but we are submitting to your work as well. Give us wisdom, I pray. Help us to be trusting you. And as Brother Whiteside has prayed so many times, we will give you the glory. We pray in Christ's name.